This modest piece of tapestry was the first building block in an empire of Egyptian artwork that spread to the world's top museums. More than half a century ago, here in Al Harraneya, a village on the outskirts of Greater Cairo, began an art center. It was founded by this man, Ramsi Suisa Wasif. He had a vision that would later revolutionize the mindset of the traditional countryside. It was an idea of Ramses uh, in 1952 that each child is born with creative ability and this ability uh, or this creativity can only come out to light through an art craft. Weaving is a very slow craft and uh, the child will sit in front of the loom. He has all the time, he works at his own speed, but the magic comes when the reality he sees in front of him merges with the fantasy he has inside him. At first, farmers' children used to come to learn weaving as a hobby, just for fun. But as some of them started falling in love with this art, social conflicts arose. Sabra Abul Saud came to the center when she was nine, but when she grew up, she was forced to leave her passion for 10 years. I left work for a while because I got married and it was shameful for a woman to work. A woman couldn't leave her house. My husband didn't mind, but my mother-in-law didn't allow us. When her mother-in-law passed away, it was easier for her family to face the social taboos. She's now proud to be back to work. I talk with my husband about work and even how much money I earn, but I don't let him feel I'm supporting the house. He still gives me pocket money, so I have all the money and I buy everything and can get whatever I want. Despite that he was a young boy from an older generation than Sabra's, Mahrouz too was challenged to pursue his unique talent in tapestries. My father wanted me to work with him in the field. He wanted someone to help with farming. So instead of hiring someone, I had to help. That's also because landowners work more than hired labor. So at first, I had to load myself and do both. I loved weaving. So when I started earning money from it, I started hiring people to work for my father so that I can focus on art. His persistence has driven him to become one of the known world artists. Since he was 17, he toured Europe to display his artwork in the continent's top museums. Mahrouz has two tapestries displayed in English museums. This center started with 14 artists, but after Ramses Wisa Wasif died, his family continued the work in the center until it reached 53 artists. Many of them were illiterate, but they proved to be great artists. The process shows how powerful the imagination is in an artist's mind. During the entire process, an artist can only see a very small fraction of his tapestry. The rest is always at the back. And the only time he sees it complete is when he's done and it's displayed on a wall. The themes are all driven from the Egyptian culture and personal experiences. Ramses's vision was to make the center self-sustained, so he started with the colors. They used natural dyes planted here in Ramses Wisa Wasaf Art Center. And gradually they take the wool, the fabric used to create the artwork, and give it all the shades of colors needed to create the masterpieces. So he went through the books and, the, you know, historical books, you know, what was used, the kind of plants were, you know, planted and cultivated in Egypt and the Middle East. Uh, unfortunately, most of them have disappeared. So uh, we got the seeds from different botanical gardens. These colors are known to last at least for two to three hundred years with no problem. Some pieces are sold to pay for the expenses of the center, others are kept in the museum. The number of artists now are down to 32. The youngest is 25 years old. So lately fears that the art could fade away are rising. I'm worried a lot for this art. We are in the age of technology and I don't find young generations learning this art. I feel that we are going to be the last generation. I fear that one day there will no longer be handmade carpets. Cairo.